Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday evening. Hope everyone's having a good weekend so far. It is still the uh, first day of November 2025, 9.44 p.m. California time. And, of course, those that set their clocks or in that time zone where you have to, well, we got to fall back one hour tonight. So don't forget, I'm going to enjoy these uh, early evenings when it gets dark like that around 5 or 6 o'clock. I do like that. All right, latest activity here shows, uh, looks like a 4.3 earthquake. Uh, see where that is hiding at. It looks like around the uh, region over here where we had a pair of deep earthquakes. Had a 5.2 and a 4.2 uh, within the last hour or so, 100 miles deep uh, around the Banda Sea area. This is where that uh, six pointer struck here a couple days ago. Also some further movement in the six range um, in the last couple days as well. So we've got these larger events, a lot of deeper activity here in the middle. And uh, now it looks like we got some, some further movement in the region, 4.3, pretty active out here. Uh, the Philippines still seeing some aftershock activity there, but I'm primarily focused around this region here um, just because of all the deeper and shallow adjustment that's going on. A lot of uptake going on here across this uh, Java Trench area and into the Indonesia region. So watch that closely. Good possibility this is leading up to something maybe a little bit on the larger size. Got to be prepared for that. Uh, Japan, one earthquake right there into the Nankai Trough of 4.1. See if the USGS is picking up on that quake. Uh, of course not. It is uh, on the EMSC model, though. Looks like it's right there into the subduction zone of the Nankai Trough. We better double check the um, Japan Meteorological Agency here real quick. See what we got uh, as far as uh, the activity. Now it looks like it's going to be, it should be this quake right here, the most recent one. Uh, it is into the Nankai Trough Zone. Looks like around section, uh, maybe, maybe section C here. There's five different segments and uh, I think we're getting close to seeing a, a mega quake out here. It's been some time since we've had uh, a, a decent event and there's been a lot of stress and build up around the region here obviously putting quite a bit of strain up here along that subduction zone so watch that closely a little bit lighter in terms of earthquake movement up north around japan into the curl camp chatka trench not a whole lot of newer activity there for now in fact if you look the northern portion here of the pacific plate uh, fairly quiet and a lot of older movement definitely ramping up back here uh, some older activity down in new zealand nothing stirring up since that 4.1 earlier um, i believe that was late last night Still getting some deeper activity here across the Tonga Trench. Uh, California, let's take a look here and see what's going on here across the West Coast. One earthquake around the Big Bear City uh, area, 2.1. Um, 2.7 in the Big Bear City earlier this morning, or this afternoon, I should say. So it does look like, uh, yeah, it looks like there's a, I have to zoom in here to see what's going on. Around Gold Mountain, there's a little bit of activity stirring up. doesn't really look like much but uh, yeah there's 2.7 a more recent two-pointer this is just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault kind of uh, you know up in the San Bernardino mountain range here this is where uh, you know a lot of the stress accumulates between the Pacific and the North American plate and as that stress accumulates over time it builds up these these um, mountains here so when things are active here, you can be most certainly believe this area is fairly well locked and um, could produce a big earthquake at any time. Uh, for the rest of the area here, one earth or a couple earthquakes around the Johannesburg region, that is uh, just right around the Garlock Fault shear zone. Uh, nothing major going on through the Bay Area for now. Northern California, a couple smaller quakes out there. Nothing big. Uh, the Cascadia Trimmer counts here this evening show us 294 epicenters of slow slip events. That is at the southern end again. So we, you know, pretty much last month, the entirety of the trimmer counts were up north here. Now we're filling in back down south. Watch for, uh, you know, watch for activity. Seems like when the slow slip events are stirring up, well, obviously it's adding further strain. Uh, upstream in the locked area, but 
Earthquakes do uh, tend to kick up here following the tremor counts when they're elevated. Uh, one earthquake here in the uh, Mount St. Helens region, they're reporting a 0.3. That was, uh, I think that was added on after the fact. I don't remember seeing that this morning. Let's go check out the Mount St. Helens uh, seismograph station here, see if there's anything to take note of. I know there was a lot of wind showing up out there uh, due to that massive low pressure system. There's the, uh, well, that's not the point three. That point three struck at two o'clock in the morning, so that would not be this recent quake. And that's a good one, though. That's showing up quite nicely there. Um, and they're not picking up on that. Let's see if we can find that little point three at two something in the morning last night. Could it be uh, 207 to be exact? 207 is going to be really close within this area. I don't even see it. You know, how can they say there's a point three when it's not even visible? This is well past the 2.30 time period. So technically 2.07 would be rough, roughly around this area. But what about this quake, you know, and what about this most recent well-defined, very visible earthquake? I guess they'll get to that Monday morning. Check it out, Mount Rainier real quick. Uh, see if anything's stirring up across this volcano. Uh, nothing's being reported. There's a handful of smaller quakes, as you can see here on the graph previous UTC time a lot of um, there's like some type of instrument adjustment going on here earlier it looks like but uh, I don't see any major uptick there's still some earthquake activity occurring these very well thin spikes showing up or uh, or some small earthquakes uh, over here in Nevada 3.7 around Tonopah earlier this afternoon getting a little swarm going on out here nothing big it's just one of uh, a couple different swarms out here in Nevada recently that, you know, had that big one up there around Valmy, Nevada. That's This is just showing a fraction of it, but there was well over, I think it was getting close to 200 earthquakes in the swarm. That has died down. Now we've got a swarm down south here. Uh, I see the town of Warm Springs here. I wonder if there's some uh, uh, geyser activity out here maybe. I don't know. Not too familiar with this area. There's a road that goes back there, it looks like. Uh, either way, a little bit of earthquake activity stirring up. Nothing uh, major for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Nothing showing up here, but that's another area that's been, you know, seen some earthquake activity. I want to see if anything's been fixed yet as far as the seismograph stations. Nope. Still offline. There's... It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And there's really, it does no good to look at the other sites here, the Yellowstone thumbnails, because the technically the graphs here are, they're not all that great at reading the earthquake activity anymore. Something's changed in the last couple months. They're not supposed to look like that. I mean, you can't even see. The, it does look like there's some earthquake activity because they were counting these back on Friday when it was coming in. So that swarm or whatever's going on up here is still continuing, and uh, we won't uh, we won't know how how big it is until they come up with the numbers. But when they come up with the numbers, it's only a fraction of what is actually taking place here. Um, for example, the seismograph stations are supposed to look something like this. Back in the good old days, <laughs> earlier this year, you could see actually legit earthquake activity showing up, distant events, maybe even some wind. Something's changed, not a good upgrade. I don't think that's an upgrade at all. I think it's a downgrade uh, to what we're seeing uh, right now because, I mean, really, look at this. How are we even going to know if Bigfoot's out there rumbling around the forest somewhere in, in Yellowstone? We won't be able to track them because, well, there's nothing... Uh, uh, the amplitudes are squashed. They got to fix that somehow. I don't think there's uh, any way to adjust that on our end. All right, moving on. Not a whole lot of newer activity out there across the area east of the Rockies. There's that earthquake right now showing up. This one's fairly shallow. See how this these large not really large but these super deep earthquakes are triggering stress out here across the surface areas around the Banda Sea that 
you know, this is one region that can definitely get some big earthquake activity. Uh, we're going to check this out real quick and see when our last one was here. Just right around the Banda Sea area. We'll draw a little uh, area of interest and see what we got. Because look at the map here, the oceanic map. There's major warping of the plates out here. Everything's twisting, pulling, and turning, and subducting. I mean, this region gets some big earthquakes. And um, I'm just kind of curious when our last one was. Let's take a look here real quick. Pull this back up. Uh, the area of interest is uh, right around here is where we're seeing that current activity where that triple point boundary is. Uh, 7.1 in that area back in 2023. 7.6 fairly uh, recent as well. A number of sevens. It almost looks like we see seven pointers every couple years or so. Um, but also right around that triple point boundary. Look at that. 1963. And 8.1 struck this area, so just got to watch it. A lot of deeper activity here recently that's obviously adding further stress and strain across that region. Um, so just keep an eye on it. Things are uh, really happening over there as far as the accumulation of uh, the multitude of counts out here are quite high. Uh, one earthquake there off the coast of Baja California it looks like. There might be a couple here. Uh, USGS probably not going to report that earthquake but there is some movement happening so watch for maybe some uh, maybe a little bit of further pressurization up north here throughout the evening. It looks like it's a fairly recent earthquake. A uh, bunch of movement happening down south here once again. Out in that area around the uh, Drake's Passage region where we've had a couple seven pointers this year. And it's literally like off of the plate boundary out in the ocean basin out here. Something brewing underneath this region. Got to keep an eye on it. Uh, let's see what else we have here. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Still quite populated with earthquakes out here around the Mediterranean. Nothing big since this morning's update, but we're still seeing... Uh, you know, quite a bit of clustering going on out there around Turkey area into the, uh, um, looks like around the Italy area as well. Just a lot of earthquake activity happening. Things are on the move. And of course we do have, uh, we have this coronal hole face. Well, getting ready to face us is turning into view. You can see this one a little bit better because it's, well, not better, but it's newer in terms of the timestamp here. That's a coronal hole center disc of the sun. Here's an older image. Notice that 94 is much further over here now. This is uh, behind the day. So right here, in a couple days, this will be directly facing the planet. And if if this is, you know, what stirs up earthquake activity here on the planet, like kind of like what we've seen here in the last several events where there's been coronal hole activity uh, facing the planet with elevated earthquake movement happening during that time period, well, then I guess we'll see what happens once it uh, comes into a more Earth-directed view. Kind of interesting how that's been uh, happening. Uh, beautiful moon out there this evening, 79% illumination. No major solar flares going on. There is an active area back across the eastern limb just coming into view. You can kind of see it on here as well. Hard to tell as far as the complexity goes. Um, let me see if I got the Stanford site here. <clears throat> I need to bookmark this to my other hundreds of bookmarks here. Keep that up at top. Um, this is the latest imagery here from the Stanford educational education site. Yeah, this one, uh, you know, newer, much newer compared to the other image there on uh, Solar Ham. So we can see uh, a fairly large coverage area back over here. A little bit of complexity, not all that impressed, but we'll look back over here as well. Um, once we get it uh, a little bit, you know, more viewable on this end. But uh, it, it could start kicking up here. It's been a really quiet week in terms of solar flare activity. 25% um, chance for M-flare activity stirring up, and that's because of the newer region. 5% for X-flare, 80% for C-flare activity. Everything else is pretty quiet out there. Uh, no major roar activity in the forecast for now. 
Um, far as any um, hurricane activity goes, let's take a look at the uh, the wind here real quick. See if there's anything coming into the Gulf or entering around the Atlantic. I really don't see anything as far as the weather models are showing. Uh, now we do have a decent storm coming out here for Northern California Tuesday into Wednesday. Got, got ourselves a little atmospheric river. That's what they call them now. You know, back just a couple of years, well, a few years ago, they used to just call these cold fronts or storm systems. You know, now all the storms out here in the winter have a name and they're atmospheric rivers, but crazy. Interesting uh, wording for it. But anyway, we got some decent rainfall, as you can see, coming in uh, Tuesday into Wednesday. And that should cover the Sacramento Valley as well. Decent snowfall uh, way up there in the higher elevations as well. So... And then it looks like maybe that uh, potentially opens a storm door. That's okay with me. Look at that. Got a trail of storms coming in there. Pacific Northwest is uh, going to get soaked. They're already soaked up there. They already got a lot of rain. Uh, precipitation accumulation that runs out here. Pretty impressive out there across the Pacific Northwest. Northern California getting a little share. Southern California, I don't see any promising systems yet. Um, San Joaquin Valley should pick up some rainfall from the system coming in Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, more than likely it'll be late Wednesday for the folks down there. Uh, Fresno area, Bakersfield maybe. But not expecting much. Uh, pretty dry out there across Arizona and New Mexico. Um, any snowfall coming up here? Let's see what we got for uh, total snowfall. Look at the Sierra Nevada Mountains we're talking about. Uh, quite a few feet up there, as expected. Some snow out there across the Intermountain West. Nothing major across the south. Uh, it looks like a couple areas around the uh, upper Midwest region. Northeast getting uh, some snowfall out there. This, is, this goes all the way till uh, November 14th. And, of course, this is all subject to change. Just a little, a little map to look at. Uh, the seismograph stations out here, all pretty quiet for now. But uh, keep an eye on things. I, I really seriously think we should see something here soon. Uh, just the way things are behaving with this deeper earthquake activity and then immediately following surface adjustment in the area. Things are quite strained out here uh, across this area of the planet. So just be on guard. 1.8 up in Alaska. Let's go check out Hawaii real quick. I know I kind of skipped that out or skipped the Kilauea volcano here recently. Should be getting close here to another eruption. Let's see what we got. See what we got. Deformation data here. Uh, if it's current, it does look like it's current here. Uh, we're going up as expected. Uh, getting close, getting close to the last level seen there during the last eruption, 35, episode 35. Uh, so 36 should be coming up here in the next couple days or so. This has been a rinse and repeat cycle since December of last year. Pretty crazy. Just been an ongoing deal. Alrighty, have yourself a good one, folks. We will see you guys out here for the Sunday morning update. Have a good one. Stay safe. We'll see you guys out here soon.